Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower channel and today I wanted to do a part two follow up to the seed starting video I did a couple of weeks ago. I was just going through some of my seedlings and thought this would be a great way to give you a visual, um, troubleshoot some things and know how I troubleshoot some things and just overall hear my thoughts on seed starting and how I have found success. Now, there are many ways to do things. Other people have different opinions about this and different strategies different philosophies, and I'm in no way saying that my way is the only way that works. I think there's lots of ways to accomplish different gardening tasks, but this is what works for me and follows into my method of interval planting and being able to harvest food really fast off the towers. So one of the things I think um, and a philosophy I follow is I make sure my starts are pretty mature before they ever go into the tower. And there's a couple of reasons I do that. One, because it helps for food to turn over faster. So if I can have a nice, simple seed starting setup in my house or my garage, and that consists of a heat mat, some of these little small individual trays because it makes it easier to seed. If you're not familiar with uh, my philosophy on using these, I'll link the part one of this video below. And some grow lights. And just having a simple setup where you can start your seedlings makes all the difference because we can leave our seedlings in that seed starting setup a significant amount of time. We can get a lot of that young maturing in the plants in our seed station instead of taking all that time in our towers. So these I started with you guys two weeks and three days ago. And so I'm going to go through what's grown and what size they are and everything right now. Um, but this could have been a lot of people put their food in the tower when they're this size. Um, I see this a lot too, these really smaller ones, or especially I see a lot of this. This is just a sprouted seed. And what can happen and what I have found is that the plants go through a stage of shock when you put them in too young. This rock wool is super absorbent and it's designed to hold water and also be very airy so the roots can grow through it. And when we put a seedling into our tower, before there is an established root system into this rock wool, the rock wool gets tons of water in the tower compared to in our grow station, especially if you're growing outside. And the rock wool can start to break down and fall apart before the roots actually get established. And I have also found it just puts the plant into a state of shock. I've seen some seedlings do nothing for as long as two weeks when they go in too young. And then they'll start to recover and start to grow, but you've lost two weeks time for that plant to go through that shock phase, where if we would have waited just another week and had them in the right environment and we get the roots established to the right size, then when they go in the tower, they take off and grow super fast. So that is why I choose to wait until they're larger. It also gives me the opportunity a week under my grow lights and my grow station my little gross, my seedling station, um, doesn't take up any of my energy. I just have to make sure I go take some water out of the tank once they have their true leaves and I water them. And that's all I have to do where in that time that this plant is maturing more and my seed starting station, I have a lettuce that can grow a significant amount in a week and go from being a small head of lettuce to a really robust head of lettuce that is more food to put on the table. So when we started these seeds, um, I have a video the week before I did the seed starting video where I shared how to do grow basil, hydroponic basil. And here are my basil starts. This is the leaf basil on this side and just a standard Genevieve Italian basil over here. And these are still not ready to go into the tower in my opinion. And the reason is basil doesn't like to be wet. Basil leaves don't do well with water. It's the reason if you've ever bought basil at the grocery store or grown basil and then put it in water to soak it, you'll get browning on the leaves pretty quickly. The water just kind of explodes the cells of the basil very fast and then it'll turn black and isn't super appetizing. Um, that The basil doesn't like to have water on the leaves like that. And what happens when we put this in too young is these leaves, first off, we've got true leaves here. And then on this side, we're starting to get true leaves, but these are kind of those first sprout leaves, that little round one right there, almost in the heart shape. 
And these leaves are really close to the rock wool. If I put this in my tower right now and this rock wool gets overly saturated, that water can start to touch the leaves and I can have some issues with these. He's getting black and rotting and then the whole plant can die. It's happened to me more than once. So what I like to do is wait until my basil leaves are, my basil stems are about two and a half inches from the rock wool. There's a nice span from the leaves to the rock wool, so there's not gonna be any water touching the leaves. And then I am also looking for all of my plants to have roots on all four sides and on the bottom. That is my preference for when to put them in the tower. There are some things that are a little less sensitive, like Swiss chard that you can put in a little bit earlier. Beets tend to be a little bit hardier. But for the most part, I wait until I have roots on all four sides and the bottom, and we have true leaves with basil two and a half inches away from the rock. Well, with some of the other things, it won't lift up. It doesn't have a stem like that. So it may be that the leaf span is two and a half inches with lettuce and things before they're ready to go into the tower. And then when these do go in the tower, they're going to take off. And like I mentioned before, they're safe here. They're under my grow lights. If I'm not growing indoors, I can put these at the rim of my towers outside where they can get sunlight. And I feed them water from the tank. The minute my starts, get their true leaves. I start to feed them water from the tank so they're getting nutrients and they just do all the work in a nice spa safe space. So let's go through some of these really quickly. So here are the green beans we started and look how gigantic they are. And these could have gone in the tower about a week ago. Once they get their true leaves, you don't want them to have their very first little green bean leaf because they're kind of fragile then. But once they started getting these true leaves, especially two or three of them, they're ready to go. But it doesn't do them any harm. I'm feeding them nutrients to stay out of the tower. I just haven't had a moment to put the tower together that these are going to go in. And they're fine just growing in the growth station. Here we had our cucumbers and I didn't and I grew some seedlings, some lettuce seedlings for the baby green section on this side because I knew these would come up at the same rate that these come up. And I talked about that in the last video. And they did, they all came up beautifully. There was one spot here where the seed was bad and didn't take. And what I can do with this is pop that rock wool out and put it in another tray and reseed it. And then those can grow so I can recycle that rock wool. Never throw them away, you can just reuse them. And that's what I'll do with those. And then over here, it's the same thing. These little babies are starting to get true leaves, but we want them to be bigger, at least an inch and a half. And then we've got roots coming out the bottom, but not on the four sides. So this needs more time. With my cucumbers, I could put them in, but technically this is the sprout leaf. The true leaf is this one right here. And cucumbers are a little less fragile, so I could put them in and they would be fine. I'm gonna wait until these true leaves bust out a little bit, mostly because I don't have space. If you had an open port and you were ready to put the cucumber in, at this stage, it's fine to go in. Same with squash. These are the same. These are all those microgreens that we heavily seeded and I talked about my philosophy on that and they need more time, but they are doing so beautifully, so gorgeous. This is a very exciting plant. This is Moringa. Moringa is a tree. It's actually one of the most nutrient dense plants on the planet. And I am experimenting with growing this in the tower. Of course, I won't let it become a tree and I'll share that journey, but all of them except for one sprouted. We had great germination on those. These right here are my Merlot bok choy or my Merlot Chinese cabbage. And I noticed about a week in that three of them didn't come up. So I went ahead and just added a green bok choy and those have since sprouted. And that's what I do. I just kind of come out and check on things. You'll see some are big, some are super small. So everything germinates at its own rate. Every seed has its own rate of germination. But after a week, I was pretty sure that those weren't gonna come up if for some reason they do come up later, it doesn't really matter. I have a plant growing on one of my towers right now and it's a bok choy and two very distinctive different types of lettuce and it's probably because I seeded a lettuce that didn't come up, I added another seed that didn't come up, I added a bok choy and eventually they all came up and now I just have this bouquet of food, which is totally fine. But everything took on there except for those three, so after a week I reseeded. Um, these are some lettuce seeds I started two days ago and they're already starting to sprout so those are doing great. And then on this last one, this is where I had some failure and I wanted to address this one. So over here we've got our purple Merlot 
Chinese cabbage and I did notice that this one is sprouting so this one came up much later but it started sprouting I can see it in there now so sometimes that's just the nature of the plant you'll get it pop up really quickly and then it takes a while for one of them to come and then these two long lanky things right here these are beets and what I believe happened all of the other nine were supposed to be beets and so when we have a situation like this where something's gone wrong this is where we have to go through our troubleshooting list. Was it too hot? Was it too cold? Too much water? Too little water? Uh, was my water clean that I used? Did I use good materials? And if all of those check off, then is it bad seeds? Or does this seedling, or does this plant need some special care to germinate, like a spinach that needs to be cold before it'll germinate? Is that what's going on? In this case, it was just a bad seed thing. I am using some seeds that I had bought a few years back, and these are to heavily seed some raised beds, and they're a couple of years old. So I believe what's going on here is that the seeds are just a little bit old, so my germination rate was pretty low. So to problem solve that and to fix that, I went ahead and added five to seven more beet seeds into each one of the grow ports or into each one of the rock wool and covered it with vermiculite. And I'm just gonna put this back and start over and see if we can't get some of these older seeds to germinate so that we're not wasting them. And that's it. When seeds starting, you just have to troubleshoot your way through it. If there's a problem going on, it can only be a handful of things. And if we can go through and ask the question, what could it be? It, the answer is usually pretty straightforward. And like this case, it just was the seeds. Um, in this case where there were three that didn't germinate, that's good to know about this particular Merlot plant. If I'm growing 12, what is this 12? So a quarter of them, um, didn't germinate. So that's putting me at about a 75% germination rate for these. So maybe I should do two seedlings per rock wool instead of one and then thin them out. I actually like to grow two Chinese cabbage side by side in my towers anyway. And some of these do have two. And I remember that I planted two seeds in some and one in another. So that might be just something to be on the lookout for too. And that comes with experience on just starting your seeds with greens like this. There should be no reason that they don't pop right up. I did the whole bottom row of my opening on my rock wool. I layered that with seeds. These are going to come up. There's no way unless you have unless you have bad seeds or bad water or an artificial rock wool or something like that. These will for sure come up and they should come up very quickly for you. That's typically the case with cucumbers and squash as well. They're easy to germinate. That is when you can start in the tower directly. But again, why? Because I can get a lettuce head to grow to full size in three weeks. I actually harvested a cabbage two days ago that was almost full size. It was a little bit smaller than it could have been, a Napa cabbage, but we needed something for dinner. So I went ahead and harvested it. And it had only been in my tower three weeks. It was already a substantial meal to add to our stir fry for dinner. And had I put it in when it was small, it could have taken as many as six weeks. I just used a lot of that time in my seed starting station to save time, increase the amount of food we can eat, uh, make our turnover faster. It gives us a lot more variety to eat because basically I'm doubling up. I'm starting new seeds every two weeks. Having new varieties of food being started every two weeks just really increases the amount of food and the exposure to different kinds of foods that we can eat. So I hope these tips and kind of giving you guys a look at my seedlings. These are my seedlings, ones that I grew specifically for our family's needs. I hope it just helps paint the picture for you on how I do this and helps to increase your success with your seed start. That's where the true food freedom comes from. When you can master this, you have access to so many more different varieties of food. Purple foods are very, very healthy for you and taste of foods and an abundance of food so you can constantly be harvesting off your tower. Have a beautiful day. See you guys on the next video.